Hi guys, welcome back. Well, in my previous video, I mentioned that I uh, was trying to put an AR32 collet chuck onto uh, an indexer that I could use on my grinding vise for uh, resharpening end mills and twist drills. And um, I needed to do some drilling on the centre hole to allow a more taper drill to go through. I'd, I'd, I had mounted it onto my lathe but it's hard material and the drills that I've got just wouldn't touch it. So I've, mount, I've put that into my heat treating oven and it's going to be a, about another 10-12 hours uh, before I can start thinking about taking it out. So uh, I started looking around and then I remembered I've got a Victoria dividing head that I'd fitted a AR40 chuck on. This is shop made. Originally this came with a three jaw chuck and I've taken that off and I've mounted this uh, AR40 chuck onto it. So I started thinking about using this. Um, it does swivel It does swivel 180 degrees. So that, swivelling that would give me the 7 degrees for the cutting edge on a drill. And then for the relief at the back, I could then take it up to the 20 degrees um, to do the relief on the back of the drill. So, let me just move this. Now the dividing heads, they come with this uh, dividing plate on. Now normally when you use these for any any milling action, really meant to be used on a horizontal mill, um, they usually set up. There's two two cutouts for the T nuts, one this side and one this side. There's none, none at 90 degrees, so they're meant to be mounted onto the bed that way. So the the axis of the dividing gear is at 90 degrees to the uh, cutting wheel. Now, normally fitting it that way, the dividing plate is slightly lower than the bottom of the dividing gear. But pissing it that way means that the dividing plate will hang over the this side of the bed, which won't be a problem. It'll still rotate and uh, it won't foul onto the bed. But if I fit it that way, at 30 degrees to give me the cutting angle for the drill, it means that that dividing plate would be catching on the bed. Now, fortunately, when I bought this dividing head, it's a, it's a Victoria, the same make as my milling machine and the rotary table I've got. When I uh, bought this, fortunately it came with this additional plate for mounting on. There's a T-slot cut at 90 degrees. So I'm able to mount it onto this base and then that with that dividing plate will clear the bed so I'm then able to mount that at 30 degrees for the cutting angle and I can fasten it to the bed with these uh, slots that have been uh, machined into the base so I'm thinking that's a possibility guys I've got, as I say, I've got any uh, party chuck in the top. Um, this is a number two Morse, but uh, I don't think there's a reason why I couldn't go up to a number three Morse on, on this setup. Now one might be ER32 that I've got in the heat treating. The drill on these will 
pass right through. So I've no machining to do on this. And uh, yeah, moist taper number two. That will go into there. I can take it right right down so I don't have too much stick out on. And then once it's uh, clamped in and set at 30 degrees, I think uh, I think that's a possibility. Now I know I shouldn't be doing any grinding on a milling machine, rather be doing it on the surface grinder, but I'm not sure. Um, the bed on the milling machine, I think, extends out slightly more than it does on the surface grinder. So I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not sure if this will sit on the bed of the surface grinder um, with enough clearance for whatever grinding disc I use in the drill. I've not tried that yet, but I will do soon. So I'd like to do it on the surface grinder, but if not, I am prepared to do it on the milling machine. Now I'd ordered a CBN wheel from China off eBay and it's probably going to be another another week or so before I arrive so I started looking on Amazon and I saw this one and this looks identical to the one that I've ordered. Um, it's a 200 grit and the cup, the cup wheel it's a grinding surface on the outer rim and also on the face and uh, I'm not sure, I thought these might have been aluminium, the ones I've uh, machined in the past have been aluminium but I think this is steel um, the spindle on the surface grinder is uh, one inch so I've been taking that out to 31.75 mil then putting the spacers on and then that has been fitting onto the spindle now I'm not sure if this is hard material or not um, I may have an arbor that I've made in the past that will fit this and then go into a, a side lock for mounting it but failing that I've got this uh, green storm mounted onto an ear onto onto an international party taper that's into a side lock now that that will fit into i've used this already on this machine so i know that will fit into uh into the horizontal mill uh, let me just see if that gives me enough clearance for the the drill Yeah, I can take the drill in to about that depth. The table's fully extended, so yeah, I think I've got enough room there to uh, put a couple of uh, bolts through into the table to mount this down, and. Uh, I can put another clamp onto this flat surface, so yeah, I think uh, if I can't find an arbor for this, um, that is a possibility with that. It may be guys that the CBN wheel will go straight onto this. I can't remember what uh, diameter the hole was in this that I'd uh, mounted it on. Um, no, I can't quite read. The, I can't quite read the sticker on the back, so I'll take that off. It, and fingers crossed that might be a direct fit onto this arbor. But uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not counting on it. Now for indexing, when I want to uh, drill, uh, grind the two cutting surfaces at 180 degrees, I've got six flats ground onto this collet chuck. 
So what I was thinking of, if I put two marks 180 degrees from each other, if I put a square on there and then rotate it so one of the flats mates up with the square, put a mark on for the uh, where the vertical position is I can then rotate it till the second mark comes to the top and then use the square again on the opposite flat to give me the uh, 180 degrees for grinding the drill Right, I'm going to uh, undo this bolt, take this wheel off, and see what we what arbor I've got it mounted on. Um, I think it looks like it's a 20, 20 millimeter hole in the centre, according to the label on there, but. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, what that green stone is. Well, they've taken the green stone off, and that's that's the same dimension that I've been using on the surface grinder. It's the 31.75. So when you when you put the spacers in, that knocks it down to one inch. So. That's what I've got on the back of the uh, back of the arbor, but I've also got this front section at the there that uh, I may have been using something with a small hole in with that. It's a while since I'd used it; I can't remember now. But that, yeah, that's it's just under twenty. Hmm, that looks promising. May have just dropped luck here, guys. Hmm. It's a bit slight, but... Don't know. Um... I need some form of spacer on the bike just to, uh get a decent contact on the back of it and then uh, I've also got this arbor that I've made for a, a disc not sure what that is hmm that's that's 22 and a half mil yeah that won't go in but It's got a straight shank on the back. Maybe if I uh, mount that on the lathe, turn that down to suit that. Hmm. I'm gonna mount. I'm gonna mount this onto this arbor. Let's see how much run out I get when it's spinning round. Well that doesn't look bad at all guys, so I think I'm going to give it a try on the minnow machine. Right. Well first up guys I'm going to set that at 90 degrees and then uh, 
for a mark on this uh, top section and then I know it's uh, I need to be 180 from that for the next uh, for the next flat well, that looks uh, that looks good there Right, <clears throat> next up I want this set at uh, 30 degrees to give it the cutting angle. That's the 30 degrees. Clamp these down now. And uh, then we'll bring this up to, I'm going to do the 7 degrees first of all. Well I've got the 7 degree tilt there for the cutting edge. So there's two other netted bolts at the back here that you tighten up. And that stops the body from rotating anymore so bring the table in I'm going to uh, try and get the drill on the, the centre of the wheel I don't think it make any difference but I can't see a reason for not doing that so I'll just bring the table up. Well, we decided to do the grinding on this side of the wheel. Um, just so it uh, makes it just a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Plus it's a bit easier to see on the camera. Um, because the machine's are three pairs and I've got it running on a frequency drive, changing the direction of rotation is not a problem. So I think we're ready to go there, guys. I've got the... Uh, the end of the drill nicely set up there, so I think we're ready to go. He says ready to go. Um, I've just had a phone call from my daughter. Can I go babysitting? Well, she goes shopping. Um, her husband's in the Middle East at the moment and she's got two youngsters there uh, and uh, I have been shopping with them and they're an absolute nightmare <laughs> I blame the parents so uh, I've got to nip out for a, a couple of hours and do my bit of grandparenting so uh, it looks as though I'm going to have to wind this video up here guys without doing any grinding but I'm sorry about that, but uh, depending on what time it is when I get back from babysitting I might do some grinding then or maybe tomorrow morning, so hopefully I'll have a video up. I'm going to put this one up now and then I'll uh, do another one in the morning when I start doing the grinding, so bear with me guys. Thanks for watching, see you later, bye bye.